here. <clears throat> I apologize at the beginning here. I'm already wearing my mask because I have been doing some top coats on a couple of things and have been heating up epoxy and I'm doing my best to avoid a reaction. So this is going to be kind of a project. This is a cup that my father-in-law gave me at, Thanksgiving, or at Christmas. And he has requested that I do an alcohol ink swirl. Now this thing is beat up, but that's okay. It still has lots of life left in it. The bottom is in pretty rough shape. That's not that big of a deal because it still sits pretty straight. My biggest issue is this right here. I'm gonna bet money <clears throat> that that used to have a rubber grip around it. So what I'm gonna do is fill that in. I really didn't need to tape it, but that's okay. I need to fill this gap in here so that when I do my alcohol ink swirls, I don't end up with weird ridges and weirdness in my uh, swirls right there. So I'm literally just going to fill it in. I have 10 milliliters of epoxy left over from the top coats I was just doing. And I'm literally just going to do this. Oops, I got a little too thick right there. And then after this is filled in and solid and all that good stuff, then I'll do my base paint. And you'll see that in the next part of the process. I don't really feel like I have to get it exactly level with the main part here. But I'd like to get it fairly close. And I think this might take a couple of layers of doing this. I do feel like maybe it'll, um, if I do it too thick, it just won't cure quite right. I know there's kind of a maximum that you shouldn't really do more than X number of whatever's thick. I haven't really looked into it. I just feel like I read that somewhere. So since this is only really going to add a little bit, I'm pretty certain I'm going to have to do more another time, probably tomorrow morning. And that's okay. He would have been completely happy if this had the biggest lumps and everything. He's just so proud of all the cool stuff that comes out of this she shed. And then um, I just wanted to be able to do yeah, something different and make someone happy. So figured I could at least make it a little nicer than it would otherwise have ended up. I'm not really too worried about having to lift that tape. I just didn't want it to go crazy down the side of the cut. And I just wanted to make it a little bit easier for me to see. And you can see it too on your end. Where the, um, kind of where my borders are that I'm working with here. I'm really not too concerned with that. All right. So I'm just going to heat this up just a little bit, not crazy hot because it really doesn't need it. Go ahead and get that excess off the tape there. It doesn't really need a lot of um, heat. I'm not really concerned with air bubbles cosmetically and I really don't think it'll affect anything function wise. but level wise it might be a problem I'm having a hard time getting it right there up in that little lip right underneath there there we go i think i got it <clears throat> sometimes i feel like darth vader or darth helmet depending on which genre you prefer or both uh wearing this mask especially when my allergies are flared up <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to heat this up just a little bit. Sorry, I got on a little sidetrack there. Got my heat gun. Hey, remember all those times I said make sure not to put that on a surface that could be melted or burned? 
Um, yeah, I totally just put it on top of this rubber bucket underneath and it totally melted the lid. Oopsie. Anyways, if I was um, putting that on something more important, I'd probably be a little worried. If it was more important, I probably wouldn't have put it there to begin with. So I'm just going to heat this a little bit just to kind of maybe pop the biggest bubbles. I'm not worried about the micro bubbles at all. My main concern is just getting this liquid enough so that it will lay down flat. Okay, I'm going to put that somewhere that did not matter. Um, so I'm just going to leave that turning literally just like that. And then I'll come back out here in the morning. Probably do it again. Probably one more layer. Looking at it from the side view here. Probably one more layer of that should be pretty perfect. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to leave it at. And I've actually changed my mind. I am going to go ahead and remove this tape. Because I've heard stories of not removing the tape and how much of a pain it is to remove afterwards. I think I'd rather not take that chance. When I do this, I like to make a little tail to make it easy to lift. If I go the other way. I've heard stories of the tape actually getting cured in the epoxy, even though I just wiped a good chunk of it off. That's not really they will say um i've seen i've heard stories of it just ruining and flaking and peeling and just being a nightmare in fact in my own experience today i was removing the tape from the glitter i put glitter around the base and rim of a cup and when i went to pull the tape 20 to 30 minutes later it was oh i was so mad it peeled up my epoxy so that's what we've got there i've just filled that in probably about halfway right now and we'll come back and add more in the morning okay so this is nice and cured i've already got my mask on because i was just heating up epoxy a second ago um so you can't really see it in the video i mean you can a little bit this is pretty good but i definitely still have a ridge right there you can you can kind of hear it there where that is nice and smooth. I think my turner was a little off level. That's my best guess. So I've got just a little bit of epoxy left over from another one I just coated. So I'm just going to add a little bit more and just kind of spread it here. After this cures, I'm going to tape off this rim here. But for the moment, I'm not really worried about it because I'm not going crazy with this layer. I just need it to be enough to fill in that ridge. And really the only reason I'm doing that is because I don't want it to make my inks swirl weirdly. It'll have a weird little ridge in there if I don't. So I'm just kind of filling this in. Right here is nice and smooth, so I'm putting all my emphasis right there. I'm just finishing this up. And then I'm going to smooth that out in just a second with the heat gun. I already have my mask on as you can already tell. Uh, or, <laughs> I already said it, duh. It's been a really long day and I'm kind of a ding dong today. Alright, so that's that. I'm not going to scrape the side of the cup this time. I normally don't have any issue with that, but I don't really need it right now. And I'm not super worried about this being completely smooth. Because I'm going to end up putting ink and more epoxy over it as we do our inks anyways. So it will end up being covered up in a way that it won't really matter. Alright. So I've got my heat gun. This guy here. Oh, dang. Forgot. I just used it. <laughs> that was really stupid. Oh, goodness. I need to go to bed. Anyway, so I'm just going to heat this up so that it lays down flat. And then I'll possibly smooth it out a little bit more. But probably not. I think it'll be okay after it levels out. Oh, 
But anything after this, I don't really feel like it's going to be that big of a deal. When you use your heat gun, by the way, make sure you put it somewhere that it's not touching anything that'll melt. I said that the other day, and then I totally set it down on top of one of my storage totes and didn't realize it was at an angle. I totally melted the lid, but I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal, but you could end up putting it on something that really hurts uh, and damages it. So we're going to let this cure, and then we'll come back and do the inks in just a bit after this cures completely. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow night. Have a good, uh, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so that has been curing overnight. It's decently smooth. There's hardly any kind of a ridge of any sort right here. It dips just the tiny, tiniest bit right here. But I really don't think that's going to be a problem on the next part. Um, I don't think that once I get my epoxy and then do all my ink swirl and everything, I don't really think that's going to be a big deal. So what I'm going to do now is tape this rim off and then um, I'm going to go base coat this white and then we'll do the ink swirl in just a second. Okay, so we are back. I've got this base coated here. Um, I just used a matte white, nothing fancy, just Krylon. You can see it's got a couple of spots that aren't perfect. That's okay. Not a big deal at all. So um, I've got the rim taped there. You can kind of see it underneath the paint. I've got it kind of settling right now. I just added a little over 20 milliliters of epoxy over that. So we're just kind of letting it level out. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you what colors we're going to use. So these are special requested green, blue, red, purple, black and white. So I'm going to go really easy on the black, but then go kind of moderate on everything else. So I'm just putting on fresh gloves before starting this. Um, the only reason I wear gloves is because I work with my hands all day and the last thing I need is for my hands to be covered in ink in front of a patient. So we are going to start with the cobalt green. Just kind of random. Nothing too fancy. No real pattern. I'm going to make sure and get some that drip down the side there. We do have a lot of colors to include, so that's all I'm going to do for now. We may end up adding some more, so I'm going to set that aside. Next, ultramarine blue. I love this color. It's so pretty. It's just really deep, but not, not navy necessarily. I've got one little spot where the... Um, spray paint kind of flaked off. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but it's kind of random. So I went ahead and threw a darker color on that because I realized I put that lighter green right there. It needed a darker color. So that's all I'm going to do on that color for the moment. Let's go ahead and do red. Cadmium red. When we do the black, I'm talking like minimal, like five drops, maybe seven drops on the whole cut. You don't have to get every single space covered with ink right away. And that red looks kind of orange right now. That's all right. We're going to roll with it anyways. So I'm just going to put purple in some of these other bigger spaces. If you drop it right on top, it tends to spread more than drip like that. See that big circle versus dropping it down on right before it turns. It makes a line. Sometimes that's helpful. I'm just adding some to the bottom now. All right, 
Some of these spots are actually gonna look black whether we like it or not, where these colors are mixing. That's all right, we're gonna roll with it. All right, so next we're gonna do black and white, if I can get the lids off, good gravy. I hate how it dries around the edges, it gets crusty. Kind of like when the jelly jar gets gross around the rim and you can't get the lid off anymore. Right, so. That's that. One more will go right there down the bottom. I've got my mask, my respirator mask handy. So I'm going to throw the white right here in the middle of some of these other colors. I just like the way that works out. I feel like it makes some of them really pop. Uh, so I've got my respirator mask handy. Definitely want that guy around because we're going to get this stuff hot in a minute. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for white for the moment. I do wanna throw just a little bit more blue, I think. The red's turning out a little too orangey. I feel like the blue is kinda almost non-existent now compared to some of the other colors. Oh yeah, this dripping just reminded me. Make sure you're working over a surface that either doesn't matter if it gets nasty or I make sure it's protected. I'm using wax paper right now just because I don't, I'm kind of out of the little papers that I normally have under there. Um, and they're getting kind of icky. I didn't figure you guys wanted to see that. It's not pretty. So I'm just going to kind of fill in the blanks here. You know, I didn't put any white on the bottom. I'm gonna actually throw a drop down the side there so I get a good swirl on the bottom as well. So just let it kind of drip like that. Drip like that, one more. Okay, so that's that. That's all the inks I'm gonna add for the moment. I might add some more in just a minute, but I gotta see what kind of movement I get first. So I throw my mask on now. Always do that whenever you're heating epoxy. Some people even have to do masks when they're just working with epoxy. We're gonna take our heat gun here and we're just gonna give it a little bit of love. I don't want it super runny. So I'm just spraying the blow in the bottom real quick. I don't want it so runny that I get complete vertical swirls. I wanna do a lot of up and down. I mean horizontal swirls. I don't want a lot of horizontal swirls. Alright, so I want to get some pretty good vertical movement because we're about to take it off in just a second. Kind of give it give it a chance at movement. So we're going to do this and we're going to let it swirl or let it, gravity do its thing for a minute. Just up and down. Actually, don't have it hot enough. It's a little cold this uh, week. Yes, we had snow two days ago, and then it was 70 degrees on Friday. And then Saturday morning, we woke up to snow. Texas is weird. I don't understand. It's very crazy weather. Temperamental, I guess, is even a decent word for it. Alright, that's pretty good. We'll give that a minute. Kind of prove it so. So we're just up and down. You can kind of see that right there. Sometimes um, I like to just let it pool in one place and then take it back down.
basically just letting it go up and down, up and down. Keep an eye on this too if you're doing it around the lip. If you tilt it too far this way and it pulls and then you tilt it where it can kind of roll under, it just adds a little bit more uh, cleanup headache. This I have taped off, so I'm going to come remove the tape in about 30 minutes from when I put it back on the turner. I don't have to worry about it right this minute because with the epoxy being more runny right now, it's more likely to go right there. So uh, in about an hour, come back, take it off. It should be set up enough to not have to worry about it. I do need a little attention there. I'm going to see if I can't get the gravity to do it, but don't be afraid to touch it. It's okay to do that. Just make sure you have a glove. Something on your hand there. Use a glove, a popsicle stick, whatever floats your boat. So I wish I could get the camera to show what I'm doing here. But I'm basically just manipulating this wad of epoxy here around my rim. So I've got just that one little space left. Oop, fell off. That's what working with protection is good for. You want to protect your surface for sure. That's actually really nice. And this is for a man, so I don't want it too frilly and swirly. So I'm actually going to let this hang out on the turner for a little while. Just give it a little bit more vertical for a second, and then it's going back on the turner. Pretty good. I like that a lot. It's not super swirly girly. It'll be real easy for a man to carry without being too fancy. And this may actually be my first successful cup that wasn't supposed to have glitter on it to actually not have glitter on it because almost every cup, I feel like, it's almost like it's in the air or something. Glitter is just everywhere. I did have to take some glitter out of the base epoxy layer. I don't really know how it got there. Fresh gloves. I just cleaned up my workspace last night. I don't know. I'm just tilting because I want to address that spot right there. I was trying to get the rim and really all I did was make a bald spot which doesn't happen very often. Since I had that upside down for so hard or for so long, I'm just going to let it go back down a minute and then it'll even out as it's turning. But everything's kind of like a continental drift, just slowly going down. Alright, so this goes back on the turner now. And it's going to stay for a about 30 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. And that way, when I get that reminder, I'll come out here and I'll take this tape off of here. Um, I've got two layers of tape, but I'm only going to take off the top layer because in about 30 minutes it should be settled enough to not have to worry about that. So, yeah. So that's where we are right now. We'll be back in just a little bit after it's had time to rotate. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's been turning for right about 30 minutes. Um, it's not it's not likely to get much more movement overnight or in the next couple of hours. Uh, so I am going to remove this top layer of tape. Like I mentioned earlier, I have one layer right there on the threads. And then I have this other layer uh, 
on the outside part. So, so I'm gonna let this turn. I've got my timer set for about four hours. That's probably overkill, but that's okay. Better too long than not long enough, and then it all pulls on the bottom and makes a big gloppy mess, and gravity takes over. So that is that. That's how you can refurbish an old water bottle, whether it's this brand or whatever you have at home. I think this said this one was a Contico or something. Um, it's been like a week or two since I actually started this project, so I don't even remember what brand it is anymore. So that's what we're looking at after this cures, or not necessarily cures completely, but tomorrow night I'll come out here and do a top coat and that's it and then maybe if he wants his name on it maybe i'll go ahead and do that but that's what we're looking at it's pretty good i like it a lot i think he's gonna like it too have a good one. Oh, oh, oh! i almost forgot if you have any questions leave it in the comments i'm trying to stay on top of that and answer in a timely manner and be helpful um if you don't mind hit subscribe that way you'll get notification Whenever I upload new stuff, I've got a couple of irons in the fire, so I'm hoping to be uploading a couple new videos over the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, that's it. Have a good one.